Давай я спрошу, как, вот, как вот, конкретно, что беспокоит группу, да, самый такой интересный вопрос, самый такой же, наверное, который ты можешь ответить. Guys, so first, let's, uh, I probably, um, not sure who to ask, but I think everybody is wondering who Nastya, right, and what is it she's doing. And probably that would be the major question that you guys want to know what is it and how she got to it, right? Give me some feedback. Give yes, some... yes, yes, yes. I'm awesome. just trying to mute everybody so that we can have no background noise or some things like that. But that's exactly what we want to know. All right. Значит, группа у нас большая собралась. Но всем очень интересно твой опыт. И вот, знаешь, наверное, чтобы тебя не... Так. I, я не могу сейчас даже сказать. Uh, how many people do we have? Um, At this time we're 22. 22. Uh, There's somebody else сейчас онлайн, но мы записываем, чтобы могли делиться нашей группой. Uh -huh. Настя, значит, знаешь как, я не хочу тебя долго отвлекать, поскольку тебе там некомфортно, но все-таки хочется просто... Ага. Хоть... Uh -huh. Да знаешь, давай, наверное, спрошу тебя а, вот от группы, от всей, а, что ты можешь сказать, самое большое открытие для тебя в, в, в автономии, да? Что она тебе дала? И давай я, наверное, переведу это сначала, а ты ответишь, хорошо? So the first question we're going to start with, uh, what is it autonomy for Anastasia in, uh, as a person, right? And what, why she is pursuing this lifestyle? Я буду тебя немножко делать паузы, я прошу прощения, я ставила, чтобы перевести. Uh -huh. So the, the point with um, this lifestyle that gave Anastasia an uh, um, experience where she feels complete and perfect as she is. So the, the main point that she's bringing is that everything is becoming absolutely acceptable, no matter how she looks, how she feels during uh, this type lifestyle. You don't feel any, um, any problems. You have no pain with your, uh, with your body. Health-wise, you're healthy just the way you are. And uh, the thing is, nothing bother you, not because it's just like so cool, nothing bother you, not even mentally, uh, people around the way you feel, the way you are. Um, Настя, ага, я тут. Про здоровье сказала, да, что это, конечно, большое вообще а, счастье, да, когда вот в плане тела тебя ничего не беспокоит, когда тебе не, не нужны массажи, да, даже mm -hmm. что такое вроде как самое, да, ну, безобидное, да, когда тебе надо, ну, конечно, элементарных вещей, там, чистить mm -hmm. зубы, там, намывать лицо, там, да, yeah. что там делать с волосами, yeah. с ногтями, yeah. потому что ногти блестеть просто начинают, просто блестят ногти, просто они yeah. всегда чистые. So important part is important part is where it's actually you don't need any uh, not 
I want I want you guys to understand her point. She's uh, referring when she's saying you don't need any uh, like life life coach or any hairdresser or go for massage or doing nails because it's all becoming perfectly uh, in the great shape, the perfect shape you possibly can imagine. And uh, when you go for massage, you go for massage to heal yourself or to make your back feel better where she doesn't need anything like that because all her body health wise is a become became absolutely healthy so where autonomia uh, made her body healthy on its own where she, her nails are shiny which is you're not gonna get that shine if you're going if you live your life your normal style and you go to a salon to make them shiny she doesn't need this because they shine on its own they red, radiate with that health same with the hair same with the skin the skin is always young she doesn't feel ages where the age uh, people at her ages 30 38 they feel aged oh, by looking in the mirror. She doesn't have wrinkles. Her skin is like a baby skin, and it's all as a benefit of this lifestyle. From how? From how? From when? How long has she lived as an autonomous person? Autonomous person, or as from how? From when exactly? Nice time. А как долго вот вот скажи такой вопрос интересует. Как долго ты живешь вот таким вот образом жизни автономным? Пусть у тебя там какие-то выходы могут, не могут быть, но вот как долго этот опыт у тебя? Ну, около, по-моему, три с половиной года где-то, три с половиной или четыре уже даже. Три и пять лет. Больше чем четыре. Да. А это как вообще? Вот три с половиной, четыре года, получается, ну вот у тебя практически большая часть из года, или, наверное, из этих лет, это без еды вообще и без воды, правильно? То есть ты вообще... Frederick, um, to add to your question, how long she's on like live this style? Uh, altogether, her practical uh, living this this way is uh, around four years. Yeah, years. I'm sorry, but uh, she is referring not to a structure where you excluded food and water and uh, sleep from the practice. It's a mental. Uh, healing it's a lifestyle where it's not connected to taking off uh, certain ingredients of your life like water and food and sleep it's all together the process the longest when she was not uh, when she's not on the food or doesn't consume anything like a veggie or food is a uh, six months six uh, around six seven months uh, at the time and that's how it's been through the years and every year, year after year. So where she comes out, she can comes out with a one like slice of uh, a watermelon and, uh, and goes back to it. But it's like a learning process. She's saying every time you are releasing some um, internal issues that you have, internal connections to this life uh, we know normal life where we are attached to a lot of things and every single time she is um, coming out she learns something she learns to uh, 
like the one of the major was deprivating sleep. It didn't come right away. First, uh, first of all, she deprivated the water. She took away water from her practice. And then uh, food, take away food completely and have it just uh, like six months straight and then try to uh, eat something and then uh, again, go back to that lifestyle. But it's all as a process of learning yourself and your possibility, being free from all attachment, uh, like food, water and everything else and being free, uh, like right now she's deprivating money very uh, in heavy way where she gave up her bank accounts, her bank cards, gave up completely to the strangers. I can't say to the stranger, but she gave it to a um, um, shelter that she stayed a couple of days, uh, a couple of weeks uh, to just hold it for her. If she's not coming back for it, she, she gave this away to that shelter and said, you can use it. It's all your, in your possession if I'm not going back here. Uh, like she's trying to release herself from that attachment now, which is very heavy and we all attach to our money. Now it's in connection to this uh, lifestyle. She also deprivates now a cell phone. You can see her taking off and days and days and days she's not connected because she's trying to, it's like a, Mm, that support, life support that we know she wants to make sure she's free from it because a lot of things opens up when she's uh, releasing herself from some other attachment. Good. Now, um, uh, she, freedom, total freedom, she doesn't want to get in the, involved in any material thing in this world. No problem with that. But then I have a question, and these are two combined questions. Uh, what is the most challenging part of this lifestyle for a person who has not gotten into this kind of a thing? You know, the good thing you have told us, your, your, your skin, your health, everything you have told from the beginning. But what is the most challenging? Because uh, I think there could be a very challenging part of the lifestyle, yeah. according to her. Yeah. Настя, такой интересный вопрос. А вот что самое сложное тебе депривировать было? Еду, воду? деньги с телефон. Вот что самое сложное в твоем этапе было на сегодняшний день? Ты знаешь, вот эти все вещи, они же связаны между собой. Yeah. То есть одно цепляет за собой другое. Поэтому вот суть как практики как раз в том, чтобы вот увидеть эту связь, да, эту взаимосвязь, например, вот э, деньги, вещи, например, да, вот даже вещи, которые, которых я тоже стала ну, намного меньше покупать, то есть я, я практически не покупаю вещи, потому что считаю, что если ты красивый, да, тебе не нужно себя излишне как-то, вот, знаешь, украшать вещами, хотя я, э, ну, раньше, как и все, была привязана, знаешь, там, э, к шмоткам, я увидела, что одна вещь, а не с собой другую вещь, ты заходишь в магазин, знаешь, покупаешь одно, да, потом тебе нужно к этому второе, третье, пятое, So uh, the, Nastya is saying um, and bringing up the point where everything connected in our life, um, including, um, let, let's say, money, uh, like money connected to uh, stuff we are buying, to the clothes we are buying. So deprivating clothes, deprivating money in a sense. And uh, it's uh, backward as well. But uh, the mm, deprivating to go to the store physically to buy new stuff, something new came out on the market. Uh, that was the most challenging for her because uh, society nowadays, they, uh, they consider uh, people being 
pretty by the way they uh, look, but the way they look is by the way they wear stuff and what they wear. Where when you are happy in uh, centralized, mm, wrong term, um, when you're happy from inside, your happiness fulfill you that much that you feel beautiful no matter what you're wearing. And that's what she started to deprivate, stopped going to buy stuff. So now she's buying less and less. Um, and uh, she came to the point where even if she got some clothes that is not really pretty, that is in the term where you can call a baggy one, a bag, ugly clothes, if you beautiful from the inside, it radiates through the clothes, no matter what you're wearing. And that's where she's, she's making a connection, deprivating the most uh, uh, challenging for her was clothes, but in the sense, deprivating money as well, right? Uh, but yeah, did I answer the question? Did she answer the question? Yeah, the part of shopping. No, that's the main thing I've gotten from that. The other question, uh, we're going to go to the chat and also we're going to open for, uh, for people to uh, ask questions. But yep. uh, does she go to social places like church, maybe to funeral for relatives? How does she relate with these people who are now not eating and they, they, they are doing normal community life, yet for her, she's now like a secluded case? So how does she uh, uh, find herself in the, maybe like burial for, 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 for a family member or a very close person that she knows, things like that. Mm -hmm. Social places that she find herself in social places or seclusions. Most yeah. of the time she's just in seclusion. And where does she spend most of her time? Uh -huh. where, yeah, exactly. Nice. Вопрос такой социальной жизни. А как ты проводишь, как ты вообще вот в социальной жизни, у тебя семья есть, есть у тебя родные, и вот они собираются вместе, как ты сама вот вовлечена в диалоги с их, как ты себя чувствуешь acceptable, как они тебя принимают или исключают, поскольку ты в таком состоянии немножко другом, да? Ответила как раз вот втором, на второй вопрос, который был, ответила, я и не задавала, не хотела, потому что я знала, что ты его все равно ответишь. Жизнь, что проводишь большинство времени на улице, то есть поскольку не то, что на улице, не в стенах, а вот именно в природе. Да, Фредерик. Да, Честно. Сейчас я переведу. Подожди, ка одну секунду. So uh, answering your question, uh, Frederick, um, interesting. Um, we are both your questions connected to one. So it's all um, it's all very new to her, just like to everybody else that surrounds her, to her family, to her community, autonomy con community that uh, live self-sufficient lifestyle. It's everything very new and fresh to all of them. So they experience and learn from her as much as she learned from people around as well, like family and um, her um, surroundings. Um, 
answering your second question, she actually went from one to another where she's saying we are getting so much insight that we want to experience it all together. So they are planning to get together in Krim, uh, Crimea um, sometimes this summer just to spend time together, everybody in the community uh, of uh, self-sufficient lifestyle. Uh, who are able to come over, they are planning to uh, participate uh, so they all can be free from any walls and every, any roof over our, their hats. And the reason behind it is um, uh, we are born into this uh, nature, into this life, not, be, not being locked in our homes under the roof we are part of nature and when we outside when we are dancing uh, spending time together running doing stuff be keeping us busy outside it's completely different experience that you live being inside and always locking yourself back into the homes every night and uh, this is another point where it's just uh, to understand that, you need to experience it. Nice to the body. Uh -huh. There is five minutes left. So she needs to. Да, да, Настя. Ага. Знаешь что, хочу. У тебя есть что-то важное поделиться вот вот с нашей группой, допустим, какой-то месседж, да, им такое дать на путстве. А зачем им тогда? Вот а что это автономия? Это какие-то инсайты, это какие-то лайфстайл. I will translate that to as a... No problem. Очень хорошая метафора. Настя, спасибо тебе большое. Благодарю тебя от всей группы. Благодарна, что ты нашла немножко времени для нас. Я постараюсь еще найти. Спасибо. 
спасибо, что тоже интересуетесь. Да, мы хотим мы хотим это принести в наш англоязычный мир тоже. Хотим познакомить их с тобой. Им очень нравится видео, мы переводили с тобой. И, конечно, все очень в ожидании вот всего вот перевод. Сейчас я буду делать все, что ты говорила. И эм, в ожидании, конечно, встреч с тобой. Обязательно, обязательно буду с тобой связываться. Я прошу прощения на, за настойчивость твою, Настя. Но я благодарна за то, что ты идешь на встречу. Надо, только надо, потому что я знаю, то у меня то, то у меня это. Поэтому спасибо тебе. Давай это. Будем Обязательно. Благодарю, обнимаю. Пока. Обнимаю. Пока. Doesn't use cell phone in traditional way like, like we have it all together in the bathroom sitting. We have it. No, she is deprivating cell phone, including, and uh, she doesn't have a connection. Um, uh, she you was using Wi Fi, uh, what is the name? Spot, or what is the name they call it? Hotspot, like, hot something. Spot from uh, one of her friends that been that she found outside she is uh, um, in the city she was uh, walking and found met the friend and uh, asked to use the hot spot from her friend and the friend is leaving and she would need to be disconnected so but um she promised that we're gonna meet again guys whatever question you have but for before we get to that point I asked her what would be the major um, experience or eye-opening for her to share with us, to give a people idea or more sense of what is it lifestyle that we are talking about, right? And she said, it's all, um, it's all connected to unity in the terms where everything is a one life, we all one life. Uh, the ideas and uh, um, resolution to our issues comes naturally to you on uh, being self-sufficient lifestyle. You, are, you um, understand things from the different perspective subconsciously. You have all the answers uh, coming into your way uh, inside of you. It's not, you don't need to read books. You get a book and you already know uh, what book um, about what it has and what it brings. You have a sense of uh, energy. Um, uh, all the problems with the parents, everything, or with the, if you have any challenges in communicating with somebody and have very bad relationship, everything is fixed on its own. When you are on that path, because it's like universe gives you the answers, but we eat them by putting food into our system. So we don't see that connection to our universe, to our nature, to everything that possible we can have or connect to be connected to. Um, uh, also, she's referring to, they still don't know if it's possible when baby born, if the baby will be able to uh, grow up being autonomy baby, right? Self-sufficient without food, without breastfeeding. And she's saying it's all in projections. We want to know this world as much as uh, we know ourselves as being eating three days a week, uh, a day, three times a day, I apologize. So, and um, it's, it's all very interesting and unique. Uh, we're, Right now, living this life, it gives them option to break through a uh, social uh, press and social blockages and barriers. Where in a lot of uh, places we have, um, it's um, having a child from one man is demand. Um, where there is, you can't go and have a child from 
couple different men, as she's saying, right? Because there is a social idea and beliefs that it's wrong morally, it's incorrect, it's wrong from moral perspective. Where she is saying this is a totally new experience where love is love all, all, all around you. And no matter uh, if you love one man, you have baby from that man. You have so you have another man that you love. You can love a, a couple people, right, uh, among your surroundings at once. And you can't say I love you more than the other. Like this is all moral, uh, our social moral barriers. And she's saying by living this way, you open up so much more that you break through all the barriers, understanding they're all created by mind, by us, by social society that was feeding themselves three days of, of three times a day and still doing it uh, for the rest of their life. And we're taking it uh, when we're born because we don't know any other experience. You're becoming, you become loving to yourself, you become acceptable with all your things. You accept yourself the way you are and you accept people the way they are. You start to see people for the way they are and see why they did or acted certain way. Uh, you see the reason why. So this is like a benefit. Um, it also gives you uh, longevity, but she, as she's saying, it's all learning process where I don't know, but in my ages and my state of mind, I am young as a girl and you can see me and you would not even guess I'm 38. Uh, she looks absolutely like a young girl -ish. and uh, she's saying skin as already mentioned earlier, her skin looks like a baby skin. She has no wrinkles. Her hair is uh, true, gorgeous. True. I mean, uh, Albina, I'm just saying true because if you look at her videos, with I, I was thinking she's uh, below 30. I was thinking she's in 30, 29, 28 there. That's very true. Mm. Yeah. Um, to add to it, um, you know what? Let's go through the questions because I know Anastasia from a little bit earlier, so I might be able to. But have you, have, some sorry, Albina, are you through with everything she said? Are you, are you sure you are through with everything she said? <laughs> or you left us hanging some other information? Right, but isn't it uh, just awesome that, um, just awesome the way life opens up? And it opens up only when we either on dry days, but uh, I don't want to connect it to a dry days because uh, the way she also represents and the way Svetlana and uh, Marina and everybody else that I have a connection and have a conversation with, them, they all say the same thing. It's not about food. It's not about water. It's like a point, starting point to take that off. To come but, to the point where, yes. Uh, I don't know if I've interrupted you because you are flowing, your thoughts were flowing. And then suddenly when I said true, <laughs> somehow it's like I inter interrupted your th flow of thoughts. But uh, uh, there's something I've realized about this kind of lifestyle. It's like all of them, they must, they have a swimming day every day. There must be a time for swimming. Have you realized that? Is it all of them or is it just common with some of them? Swimming, swimming every day. Because summer is summer and they're all in the um, Black Sea. So they're all right now on the, around Krasnodar region, around Ukraine, we are Crimea, it's also Black Sea, other side. Um, Marina, not uh, there, but they all swim. And a lot of, you will find a lot of autonomy people, people from that, uh, movement i would say movement they all swim yes not just swimming but it's not coincidence it's just or maybe it's a coincidence i would say I, I was wrong but because you free yourself from so many things can you guess deprivating sleep how much time you're gonna have in your hands but you want to keep yourself busy so like we have um uh, one uh, Armenian girl from Moscow, she deprivating sleep. She uh, doesn't eat and doesn't drink over like a year, uh, six months, seven months. 
Um, if we have any Russians here, they will remind, they can uh, confirm the name. I don't remember, Guar. I believe her name, Guar. Um, so, and she, she said, all I do all night, every night I go to the gym because this is the only way I have, I have only time to work myself, to work my body off, to release the energy during the night. She's either uh, swims or she works out. Um, and, um, you know, swimming is uh, very common in Russia though. Okay. So I, I, I hope, uh, do you have anybody with any questions before we can conclude? But uh, we hope to have as soonest because we had so many questions that uh, there, there are like thousands of questions. <laughs> So um, you know what? There was a question about meditation. I can answer from her conversation before that, what she thinks about meditation, right? So she doesn't believe in any meditation. Why? And she answered it clear on her um, like every time everybody somebody is asking her. She's saying it's just a way of um, taking off from her life because my autonomy gave her all the things that she needed. All her life, love to herself and to the world around, she got from autonomy lifestyle. Meditation is not part of her life. That's I can tell you for sure. Okay. About animals, I also think uh, I, it's in one of, the, uh, one of the questions, one of the videos that I think we have done with you, mm -hmm. uh, where, there's a dog that doesn't, that uh, is quite wild to everybody else, but for her, it's friendly. You can explain better. <laughs> Talk about yeah, it. Yeah, so with the, with the animals, she always also uh, talks about this, uh, and we can find them in a lot of her interviews too, because this is a interesting question. A lot of people are wondering how things happen, but um, she is uh, also saying things around you changes. Uh, people around you changes when you change, um, including dogs, including animals. Like if there is a barking dog, angry barking dog would bark ev to, ev to every- At to everybody, passes. yeah, at everybody. At everybody. Yeah. She, she's saying, I will be passing, that dog will uh, come over, will start to, wave the tail, would start to sniff uh, her, would be like following her and would keep barking on other people, but not her. And it's like, it happens all the time with every single animal. You can pass. And if you are your like not you, but normal person is different with people who on uh, autonomy, Svetlana confirmed confirms this to this uh, unique things that happens all the time to her as well. Uh, yeah. Joram, Joram Shaw, want to say something? We are about yeah, to wrap it up now, sorry. Yeah, I had a couple of questions. And uh, by the way, that's fascinating. You know, it's, it really feels like when you have such a respect, you know, for nature, that nature starts to respect you or honors you when you, when you honor it and when you honor your body. Um, the questions that I had was, you know, how important would, would you say is the, the subconscious mind when it comes to these types of things and factoring in, um, you know, like, is it a certain specific, like an amount of time that you have to believe that you just don't need sleep? And also, did it take, you know, willpower to push through the first year or do you feel like it's consistency? Oh, wow. Good question. Uh, I actually was asking uh, Svetlana the same question and she, with uh, Anastasia, she's saying uh, when uh, you are, and probably a lot of you who experienced the uh, dry fasting, long, long dry fasting, they noticed that the sleep fell off on its own, right? So that's what happened when you're on uh, that path with a self-fulfillment, with a uh, on autonomia, let's say. Same thing happens. But uh, at first she is, um, well, sometimes she does have uh, also 
situation where she falls asleep, but it's Anastasia saying it always short, like the maximum she falls asleep 10 minutes. And then it might be like a little longer over the day because she falls off during the driving or I mean, being a passenger when she's a passenger with somebody and she fell off the conversation because she always tries to keep herself busy. That's her way of pushing away sleep because we all fall asleep eventually if we are bored, uh, we have nothing else to do down on Uh, so yeah, <laughs> and uh, that is the reason. Uh, but see, everybody from auto autonomy they push away sleep because it brings more awareness into their life. It brings more um, understanding. You can see world and people and different perspective, different way, you open up a lot of different ability in yourself, subconsciously, consciously. So that's why Anastasia pushes herself to deprivate sleep. Mm. Still now, she, she, as I'm saying, she has a, a page, a app, Telegram, and all her people, all her uh, supporters and um, followers, they all in that group. The way she keeps her night uh, herself up, if she has cell phone, she's on that group, speaking, talking, giving uh, some feedbacks to people in regards to so certain things. So it's still a yes. process of learning. It's not like, okay, it's no more, no, now it's no more, no. Right, so is it like uh, you're saying she's consistently like pushing through is she building like is this a mental muscle that you flex and you exercise and it gets stronger with use or stronger with time or is it just a constantly like um being persistent and pushing through the the sleeplessness or pushing through the sleep that's trying to come on to you and using like physical activity or vocal activity to combat it like what, oh, yes. what yeah. Good, good uh, question. Actually, yes, and she's saying uh, the most important in that to keep yourself awake is somebody else, conversation, exchange, giving experience, and that's why she does it freely without any fees and char charges because this is the only way the universe goes comes back to you and uh, uh, keeps you awake. And uh, yes, uh, it's a, it's a, sometimes it's a fight, sometimes it's not, but it's from my, I, it's not, not Anastasia saying, I'm saying from what I heard. Uh, but um, uh, is again, referring to our dry days, right? The longer you do dry fasting, like I have people who do a 20 days dry fasting and uh, my, one of my friends, she does it constantly 20 days. And she's saying over like we, somewhere on the seventh, eighth days, sleep falls off on its own. Like she, at first, when she didn't know about um, autonomy, because she has a very a long experience in doing it to herself, but not doing it to herself. But it's her way of healing herself whenever she has uh, some uh, sickness. But she at first didn't know and she was trying to push herself into the sleep. And then when she opens up autonomy, autonomy lifestyle, she learned that you don't have to sleep. So she stopped doing it to herself, but still her sleep is around two hours. And uh, the longest could be like four hours if you exhausted through the weeks of going through something. But she, no. Um, another thing that every single one of people from autonomy, right? They all saying, when you on that path, you have so much energy that you need to push yourself. Because if you have that energy unreleased, it, it puts you into the sleep. Mm. So you fall asleep because you didn't release the energy. And that is the connection to go and work out to release it, this energy. And another example that I'm gonna bring up, 
when we hear a music we love, even being falling asleep at, on uh, our bed, what are we doing? First thing we want to jump up and we're like, okay, let's, let me, I'll go sleep right after. And you can't because you release the energy. Now you don't want to sleep. Right. You see the connection? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Alvina. Thank you. No problem, Jeremy. I hope I answered your question. Uh, Hans, Aranka, Aranka wanted to say something. Okay, I apologize. I interrupted you when you were on the. No, no, it's okay. No, 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 it's all right. I just wanted to. Um, isn't it crazy, almost supernatural, that um, William Magre wrote this Ringing Cedar series? You've read it probably, right? I'm no. gonna write it down, and I will. And it's like twenty books. Uh, uh, he wrote it in the sixties and seventies or eighties, even. And it's about Anastasia, who does not eat, does not sleep, and does not drink. And there's a movement in, in the steppe of, of Russia. And there are little communities trying to practice it, but all they do is basically just uh, self-sustaining eco-villages. They really can't, they haven't got the, the idea what this Anastasia has of, of, as of um, food and drink preparation coupled with the sleep. There, they're just trying to follow what Anastasia already had. Um, but it's, it, you, should, you, you must read this book. And, and I'm just like another Anastasia from Russia and doing the same thing. Like, what is it? Like it's crazy. You guys never read it? None, none of you? No, we'll write it. Uh, we'll read it. Yeah, you're talking about two Anastasia, two different uh, individuals here. One yes, that lived yes. long ago and one that is now present. This one that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. Although we, as a reader of that of that book series, we didn't believe the author. We thought that that author was me just made it up. But now seeing Anastasia here in my uh, life, I said, well, that must be true then. So now I'm I am accepting what M William Mager um, wrote in the Ringing Cedars. And if you want to read it, it it's, it's a very fantastic um, book. Um, well, now we I can highly say based on the real story. <laughs> I know, exactly. Isn't that amazing? But it comes after, like, um, mm. see, I lived the last 20 years having read the book that it's, it's just a story. And there you go. Even though she, he says, he claims that there, there was an anesthesia in the forest, in the step bay. Wow. And then there she is in the city. Yeah, right. Like, it's just right, so right. unreal. Like, I'm just like trying to put it together in my head, but But you okay. know what a great point here? You brought a great point that the way anesthesia, uh, anesthesia from, autonomy brings this across is free from any religion she's not connecting it to any movement or any religion mm -hmm. it's free you it's just love that comes from inside out and it's it just covers everything and everybody around that's mm -hmm. such a beautiful one i was wondering if um, maybe next time um I know she doesn't do meditation because it takes away from her she fun. Does not, no, she does not do meditation. But she, she, she is very well versed in um, Dr. Bute our Buteco method of um, sleep deprivation. But I'm asking more of uh, his uh, work on um, breathing deprivation, breath deprivation. Yes, you he are. Does. She I'm does. a little bit, uh, well, I'm a little bit, I don't, I'm not sure about that part, but I know there is another, <clears throat> um, a lot of uh, groups that do uh, a lot, um, follow the Olga, breathing. Olga, Olga Podoravskaya, she also mm -hmm. teaches that, um, the Buteiko method, meaning that you want to be in the pause. When, when you exhale, and there's nothing in you want to stay there as long as possible yeah, comfortably yeah. comfortably and then you inhale with the normal so i practice that daily and it's not easy it, um, um if, if one is, is is silly you can go into a panic if, if you're not mentally yeah. strong in my opinion one can go into a panic state because that's how you feel for example olga she would take um people into the sea 
and duck them down. So there you are underwater. You can't get you can't get air. And there yeah. is your and there's your test, right? <laughs> you know, interesting that uh, when again, uh, if you practice dry days, uh, clean days, you don't need to breathe that much. Like I meditate every night, and I found my, myself sometimes not even breathing. Like it's it's fascinating how I'm just sitting, and I instead of the set next breath that I, or inhale that I need to take. I am silently, my chest is going popping up because if the body oh, used to used to breathe, right? But I have no right. inhale. Like this is interesting. Yes, it's, it's called um, Kevala, I think, right? Any, any yogis there out there? I'm, I'm, I'm sure Jerome would know it. Um, and it's the breathless state. Um, yeah. Uh, and it's, 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 it's fantastic, yes. But it's, it's a, it, it, it reached... You can reach that in many ways, Kevala on the breathlessness. Yes, and I experience it too. It, it's beautiful. Yeah. That's why I meditate because I enjoy it. It doesn't take away from my fun. I yeah. guess um, I'm in a different age group than. And this was my other comment. Uh, nothing negative. It's just it's easy to say. Well, I have baby skin. I have beautiful hair and beautiful nail. I'm only 38. Okay, talk to me when you're 62, and then yeah. I want to see. Well, because... that's what we're going to bring to uh, our next uh, speaker, not today, but sometimes later on, we'll uh, communicate that with Frederick, Frederick, uh, Marina. Marina. Yep. Yeah. Uh, who can share her mm -hmm. experience and uh, what happened to her as she treat, treated her cancer. Well, that's yeah. important to, to be able to overcome such a deadly illness, yeah. such as cancer that so many people basically mm -hmm. die um not from the disease but from the treatment most likely yeah um, we yeah, know that right. yeah 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 oh what else oh, I, okay i won't take any more you guys oh. go well, ahead thank you thank you thank you thank you so thank much Aranka. So thank you so much and uh, uh, i yeah. don't know is, is this book for william Magrin? is it in russian or it's in russian no it, it, it's in, in english french i read it in french but it's uh, also in english um the ring uh, cedars. You if you go to post the book, uh, no, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll find a link. I'll fi I find yeah, a link. link. Yeah. Awesome. Thank and you. It, and if you want it in hardcover, it's now it's a collector's item, like 20 books for hundreds of dollars. Like, oh, like, okay. <laughs> uh, oh, somebody already found it in ebooks. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, um, in free okay. ebooks, I need to copy this. Okay. All right. Okay, and, and, and guess what I'm guess what I'm doing, guys? I'm cooking meat, not oh. honey. <laughs> yeah. I thought okay, we were to meat with you, Ramka. <laughs> and look, 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 meat and more meat, and the whole family eats meat. <laughs> no, that's my job. Okay, that, thank you. It's such an irony, isn't it? Okay, bye, guys. <laughs> no problem. Um, bye. Enjoy you. cooking. Enjoy your cooking. <laughs> uh, now, I don't know if somebody else has something else to say. But I think uh, it's good we wrap it up. Okay. Well, if somebody wants to share some other insights or some other things, please, please, before we disconnect. Yeah, this book is found in ebook. It's a uh, net slash body spirit Anastasia. Exactly. Merge, Vladimir Merge. I'm opening up something different. Let me try to use that link that sh that will be down. The title was the Ringing Cedars. Ringing like bells, ringing cedars. Oh, C E D A. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Okay. All right, I guess nobody have any uh, anything to add to our meeting. I, I personally thank you all guys for coming on this meeting. Frederick, thank you so much. You're most welcome. It's, it's uh, 1 a.m. my side, this side. So I'm like, I'm not sleeping tonight. Good <laughs> <I'm> job. <scared. laughs> so anyway, thank you so much. We are going to have so much. We have, op this thing has just opened was on something very unique, very strange. It's not like any other things we have been doing all along. So 
thank you, Albina. Thank you so much for this connection. Thank you, everybody that is present. And uh, thank you, thank you, guys. And we love you all. The only language now is love, 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 nothing else. Love you guys. <laughs> we'll see bye you bye. next time. <laughs> bye.